Um, so my name is Akram Khalisa. I'm with the Office of Financial Empowerment, um, and I'm excited to just see a diverse range of leaders, partners, and visionaries who are committed to reshaping the future of our economy. Um, and I really wanted to take a moment to start with a personal connection to today's theme of cooperation and shared ownership. Um, as someone who grew up in Ethiopia and is from Ethiopia, the concept of community and collaboration are embedded in my culture. So there's a saying that we have that says, when spider webs unite, they can tie up a lion. And this speaks values, um, volume to the incredible power of collective action, uh, no matter how great challenge the challenges are. Together as a community, uh, we can achieve incredible things. Um, and so the idea of shared ownership is something that I think a lot of us carry with us both whether through our culturally or just through like our passion that we grew with us along our journey. And so that's why the work that's being done here in St. Paul is aligned um, for all of us. Um, and so I want to start by acknowledging the incredible presence of our city leaders, policy makers, funders, cooperative developers, financial institutions, and the cross-sector organizations that are all here with us today. Um, we're joined by our co-hosts, uh, the City of St. Paul, Nexus Community Partners, Project Equity, and Living Cities. And I want to recognize all the other stakeholders that we have here today. Your efforts and commitment have really helped bring us to this key moment that we're in here in our city. Um, so how did we get here? The journey of shared ownership in St. Paul has been intentional and collaborative and guided by a vision of economic inclusion. Um, and it started in 2019 when the mayor's office attended the government equity conference in the Bay Area to really learn about what worker ownership was as that was something that came up in conversations previously um, with mayor and Rapa and others. Um, but that was really the moment that we took the time to like really dive in and learn what that was really all about. Uh, and shortly after, Mayor spoke at the Worker Ownership and Community Wealth Building release at the McKnight Foundation, which was a catalyst for the city's ongoing commitment to this work. That same year, the Office of Financial Empowerment, which started in 2019, was tasked with a multi-departmental work group bringing together city departments to push the shared ownership strategy forward. And in 2020, the OFE, the Office of Financial Empowerment, named worker and community ownership as one of our top five priorities, um, casting a vision for an inclusive economy where residents have both the voice and also an economic stake in their communities. So um, what does the Office of Financial Empowerment do? There's a number of things that we work on um, and we, the office plays a key role in promoting values of equity and inclusion across St. Paul. At its core, our work is about helping residents connect to financial health resources and also thinking about that long-term economic power. We lead initiatives like our college savings account program, which is called College Bound St. Paul, which launched in 2020 and it sets every child that's born in our city on the path to higher education and career training. Um, and this year actually marks the first year that our oldest college round participants are entering pre-K, which is incredible. Um, that program. And we also work on other things like our medical debt release program, which helps alleviate burdens medical debt on families in St. Paul, uh, fair housing and tenant protection strategies, which helps um, ensure that our residents have access to stable housing, and of course, our shared ownership work, which is kind of what brings us all here together today, uh, because we believe that everyone deserves an opportunity to participate in wealth, building, creating an inclusive economy. A key part of this journey has been the local tone, which you'll get to hear more about um, throughout the day today, which emerged as a response to the disparities that were already existing within business and real estate ownership that were then intensified by the pandemic. As you all remember, yes, the pandemic was a thing, <laughs> uh, which is kind of crazy to think about now. But the local fund consists of two key programs the community ownership and worker ownership programs, and they're both designed to increase local ownership of businesses and properties in St. Paul. Um, and through those models, we empower community members by giving them an economic stake in their neighborhoods, retain and grow business and jobs, and also create resilient and equitable economy that builds wealth for all of our St. Paul residents. And 
as uh, courtesy of definition of the Nexus Community Partners, when we think about community wealth building, what is that? It's rooted in the values of equity, mutuality, and stewardship, and it's driven by the belief that economic systems must shift away from extractive models towards ones that are regenerative and inclusive, um, that are inclusive for everybody in our community. So where do we go from here? This is just part of the conversation that you know will continue, right? It's not like we're all gonna be here today and then we're gonna move forward. Um, the progress that we made is just beginning and today's summit is a chance to build on the momentum to take both steps forward and also ensure that the shared ownership becomes a cornerstone of our city's economy and also beyond thinking about our region. So um, our partnership with Project Equity has helped us analyze the business landscape and also explore policy opportunities that will allow us to scale initiatives like the local fund in the future and support shared ownership overall and strategies around that. Um, so there's work ahead of us, but that's where everything we want to do comes in. Um, we all have a role that we can play, um, whether you're a policy maker, a property developer, a funder, or a community funder, um, all of our roles are really essential to uh, helping us move forward. So I encourage you all to remain engaged and involved as we continue, as we continue to invite your village to reach out and make sure you're, you're responding. Um, and also holding us, you know, at the city accountable to to making sure that we're able to like move this with forward. So thank you all for being here. I look forward to all of the conversations and discussions and the innovations that will come out of this room. Um, and thank you all for all of us, our hosts and planners that made this summit possible. Uh, next up, I'm going to invite Rapa and Evan to uh, facilitate our next session. Thank you all. Uh, I'm Evan Edwards. Uh, I am the um, CEO of Project Equity. Um, we are a leading organization in the field to create uh, worker-owned, employee-owned, I use those terms interchangeably, uh, businesses across the country. Um, and in addition to that work, we also uh, advance normalization of employee ownership, worker ownership in the national economy, right? We want this to be a generative tool in tr business transactions across the country on a regular basis, not something that just happens locally and is driven by small organizations in local communities, but actually becomes part of regular business such that uh, workers have ownership in businesses as a regular course of transactions. Um, we are Oakland, California founded and headquartered. I happen to be based in Los Angeles and will acknowledge that as happy as I am to be here, if this happened a month later, you might have had to be able to Zoom <laughs> in person. I'm pretty thin-blooded at this point. I went to school in Chicago, right? I'm, I'm a thin-blooded guy now. Um, uh, before I uh, uh, get into my comments, I just want to thank, uh, he's not here, but uh, Mayor Carter um, and the team at the City of St. Paul, May, who my team works with very closely. Um, I met Mark, Mayor Carter a couple summers ago at the Prosperity Now conference and had a two hour conversation with him. We were supposed to get together for about 25, 30 minutes. And um, uh, we just talked about wealth gap and building local economy, and building them from the, the bottom up term that you hear now in the uh, presidential race all the time, the bottom up and the middle out. Um, and um, I really appreciated his recognition of uh, worker ownership, cooperatives, uh, as being a tool for being able to bridge the yawning and growing, unfortunately, wealth gap that we have in this country. So I want to thank him. I want to thank uh, Rapa and the team at Nexus Community Partners. Nexus was Project Equity's very first partner in this field. And uh, we've learned a lot in collaboration with them. Um, I think uh, beside Rapa, Patty on the team, who is a Project Equity alum. Um, I want to thank uh, also uh, Jennifer Bryant uh, from the Project Equity team. And uh, there's a number of folks on the Project Equity side who've been super, uh, super helpful. Also, just since she's in the room, I would also want to uh, send a shout out to Christina and the team at Chaired Capital Cooperative, who were the 
uh, financing engine for a number of the transactions that we do at Project Equity, but also uh, co-ops uh, nationally. And we've learned a lot about how it is that we can finance these deals and make them sustainable. So thank you all. Um, as you all know, there is a significant wealth gap in this country. Um, at last analysis, uh, the upper 10%, and I put upper in quotes, the upper 10% hold 67% or more of national wealth. And anyone who studies economics knows that, that that's not sustainable. Right? At a certain level, if folks don't have the means of being able to have a sustainable lifestyle, they can't buy goods and services. And your economy is going to collapse. And so it's not just a matter of uh, equity. Equity is important, and we lead with that. But it's a matter of sustainable, having a sustainable economy, having a just economy, right? That we have uh, workforces have equity and ownership in businesses and in real estate and in any other assets, right? And I'm here to talk about employee ownership in particular. Uh, we're at an inflection point in our economy where, again, the vast majority of small and middle market businesses with workers, so with employees, uh, are owned by baby boomers, right? And you've probably heard of this referred to as the silver tsunami. In the next 10 ish years, most of these folks are going to retire. And what happens when they retire, unfortunately, is about two thirds of their businesses end up closing, right? It used to be, say, 20 out of 25 years ago that um, most businesses transitioned within families. I think the exact statistic is around 2000, year 2000. Um, 50% of businesses, 40 to 50% of businesses transitioned in families. Now that's only about 15%. Right? I talk to small business owners all the time and they say, well, you know, my kid wants to choose another profession or vocation. They want to build apps. They want to do any one of a number of things. And, and you know, that's, that's their prerogative. But, you know, oftentimes their family owns a really viable business that, you know, makes good money and uh, could be, it, it's an important part of their community and economy. Um, of these retiring uh, business owners, only about 20% of them will actually sell their business, right? So you've got 15% now that transition in families, 20% that, that, that actually sell when listed with a broker or listed on a platform like Biz Buy Sells, so that's 35%. That means you've got 65%, two thirds of small businesses that end up closing. And we've got that data that backs this up. So what happens when that happens? Well, you lose jobs. And folks who work in those small businesses lose their incomes. Communities lose vi vital parts of their economies. And by the way, those business owners who have seen their small business as a paycheck for years, they, they, they lose a retirement asset. So again, I go back to the pragmatic need for more worker ownership and employee ownership, right? Because it serves workers, it serves local economies and communities, and it serves those retiring business owners. Um, right now, we are doing our darndest to see to it that more communities uh, like the Twin Cities, are engaging in employee ownership initiatives. Is that the signal that my voice isn't carrying enough? Uh, so we form partnerships across the country um, with the ideal that we will embed this work uh, in local economies. And we'd like to see to it that you know, organizations like Project Equity and Nexus can get the ball rolling, but it's incumbent upon all of you who operate within the local business ecosystem to see that this work becomes a part of the local fabric, right? So that means lenders, that means other community partners, that means 
CPAs and the folks that work directly with business owners have to become fluent with understanding the power of this work. Um, so with that, I hope today that you all leave understanding more about the power of worker ownership and the opportunities that it presents, that it is an important equity strategy for marginalized communities, but that it's also really important for the sustainability of the, the economy on the whole. And to speak more to the power of it as it relates to the Twin Cities, I'm gonna turn it over to Rapa now. Thank you very much for your time. Good morning. Do I need this? <laughs> Who said maybe? <laughs> uh, may the ancestors guide my words, my thoughts, my deeds, and my direction. Uh, my name is Rapa Makai. I serve as Nexus Community Partners uh, founding president and CEO um, and want to send out to all of you a thick, thick welcome for being here this morning um, and spending time with us and with each other. Um, just a, a, a brief, a brief uh, story I have to tell this morning. I, um, I got the information and, um, for the event. <laughs> Don't laugh. <laughs> I got the inf inf uh, information for the event early on. So it had content around what we'd be covering and so forth, but it had the original address that we had chosen, which was the Ordway, performing the uh, Center for Performing Arts. And so I show up there, <laughs> right? And I'm walking around, and not only are the doors locked, but there's these huge red kind of double locks on the door. So I'm saying, ah, I don't know if folks moving through this in the way that, <laughs> right? So then I said, you know, and it ain't April, so I know that ain't what's going on. Maybe I'm being pranked, <laughs> right? So then I start looking for cameras, right? And I don't see cameras. So then I say, I say I'll call Christina and Patty and Benjamin. And of course they have their phones turned down because they're in space with you all. Then I really start to think something fishy is going on around here, right? <laughs> um, Come to, come to find out, Benjamin called me back and said, you know, well, it's actually, um, I'm in a different location. And so I sped over here as, as fast as I could. Um, I just wanted to take a moment and um, at the end of the day, when, when, when this summit is done and we move on, the work happens on the ground, it happens here. And so context matters, right? Where we're at matters. And so I just wanted to just touch on that a little bit um, and, and speak to kind of what I think is three kind of converging energies that are happening um, in our space. Um, the, the, the first is I look around the room, and I remember back about 10 years ago, we did a convening of folks who are in the cooperative space, um, really to kind of get an assessment of what's present and what's not and what might be strategies for moving forward. That space wasn't this big. And so one of the things that I just lift up is the fact that we've learned, whether by choice or by chance, that nobody does this work alone. That it takes an ecosystem of folks working across areas, whether it's uh, uh, capital resources, uh, worker cooperative development, and, and that's whether start, startups or conversions, um, real estate investment, that it takes that kind of multi-layered, multi-lane approach in order to create real sustainable change. And I find us in more spaces like this together than not now as a, relative to 10 years ago. So it's, it's refreshing to see that we are finding our way together and finding ways to link our work together. I don't think it's possible to move forward in any kind of sustainable kind of way without doing that. The second stream that I think that parallels that, that exists in the Twin Cities, and I've seen it in the Twin Cities, is, is in other places, but I've never seen it in places like in the Twin Cities, that there's a movement afoot on the ground. 
that as you move around neighborhoods and, and communities, you hear this harm. And that harm is a harm of recognizing that cooperative economics and collective care has always been a part of the way the communities have taken care of themselves, right? And that, there is a that, and that there is a very deliberate reach, an intentional reach backwards and forward to reclaim that practice, to reclaim that value as a guiding, as a guiding light moving forward. Um, and they are calling on us to reflect, to reach back as we go forward, and to recognize that all that we are doing is not new that it is anchored in some tradition and history that has been there before anybody in this room, right? And that folks are not only seeing um, uh, worker ownership, shared ownership models, community wealth building as ways to advance work, but as building blocks for liberation, for folks being able to set the course of self-determination in ways that they've longed for in a long time. And so, yes, it's an economic development strategy. Yes, it strengthens economies, but it also delivers to people their own labor. And it allows people to reclaim themselves in the process of building community, right? The third kind of uh, energy and flow that is playing itself out is that we are operating in a city, in a region, that has fully embraced wealth building as a strategy for strong, building strong economies. And so you heard some of what Ikram said about the, the city of St. Paul and its commitment. Um, I remember in, in 2017 when, when Ikram and the mayor and I had just had a conversation over coffee and, and, the, and the idea stuck and seeded and the commitment that he's demonstrated and the city and their staff has demonstrated to sticking to this over time and not losing track on shiny things and thinking about it in the context of other strategies that they're engaged in has demonstrated that they see it as a critical part of their work, right? Um, and not only have they done that and at the city level, we have, and you can, if you all know, we have uh, as other anchor partners, foundations that see this as a viable strategy for shifting the landscape and not just temporary solutions to, tip to situations that folks have been dealing with for a long time. Um, that these pieces are coming together in our region in ways that I've just not seen. Um, and I've seen, I've seen anchor institutions do the work. I've seen organizations organize. organize. I've not seen community run up the middle. I've not seen a balancing of both of those components by community in other places as, it, as I've seen it here. And so I say to you this morning that um, you have what you need to do this work. It really is about how do we fuel it and guide it going forward. And this summit lives in that context. This summit is not just an event for learning and sharing and, 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 and getting to know each other a little bit better. It is a higher call for us to rise higher and to reach further. And so I hope that you dig in. I hope you lean in. I hope you have fun. Um, I hope your, your head hurts a little bit, you know, um, but in a good way. Um, and I look forward to being with you during the day. Thank you.